So what's going on in Antarctica? John Kerry, Secretary of State, right now he's in Antarctica, of all places, this very moment. Highest U.S. official... Well, this is not really true, actually, is it? I think Obama made a secret trip there earlier this year. So in 2016, right now, we got John Kerry there. And in February of this year, Patriarch Kirill was the first Orthodox leader to visit Antarctica. And he met with the Pope right around the same time in Cuba. And Obama, I believe he made a secret trip to Antarctica because he extended his trip in Argentina with a Patagonia visit, which is the southernmost part of Argentina and not so far away from uh, Antarctica, at least some of those islands. So he could have very easily snuck off to Antarctica. And uh, I'm going to show you how this ties into a lot of things. Now, in my last video, I talked about this executive order from May 6th, 2016 facilitation of a presidential transition where basically he expanded his transition team. And really, if you're transitioning out of power, you really don't need a huge team, do you? And see what he did? He, he added these people, these officials, people from all kinds of different departments, people from the National Security Affairs, and this one, most interesting, Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, which shows you that they're basically planning a false flag event because Homeland Security arose out of 9-11, false flag event. Economic policy... National Economic Council, National Intelligence, Office of Management and Budget, any other executive branch official the president determines appropriate. So basically anyone he wants, really. <laughs> Just about anybody. This is a transition team, keep in mind, where he's supposed to be leaving office. And he can go off and play golf, whatever he wants to do, right? He, he's supposed to be leaving office, but he's ramped up this team, transition team. How hard could it be? You just pack your bags and go. That's... That's all you got to do. Have a guy teach Donald how to use the remote control, and you're done. Get out of there. Don't look back, right? And then if you look at the fact sheet, this is all from uh, whitehouse.gov, by the way. Here's the key part right here. Engaged agencies not traditionally included in the formal transition planning process. Okay, so this is like Barry's new thing that he's doing. No one's done it like this before, and you'll see that this group, including more than 200 entities, has been engaged fully in the transition process from the beginning and has met regularly over the past several months. This is this is incredibly important sentence right here. 200 entities. Now look at this. Look at this here. Look at this. The Book of Enoch, which I believe is the oldest book in the world. This book's about 5,000 years old. Talking about the angels in heaven. The angels, the children of heaven, right here. Okay, this is chapter 6, verse 2. The angels, the children of heaven saw and lusted after the, uh, the beautiful women, the human women, them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And they were in all 200. So 200 fallen angels, they basically uh, rebelled against God and they, they planned to take over the world. 200. 200 entities, right here. 200 entities in the book of Enoch. Chapter 6, you can find the same story in the Bible. Genesis 6, verse 1 through 4, when man began to multiply in the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God. This is the angels. Saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Verse 4, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God, the angels, fallen angels, came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown, uh, also known as the giants, the Nephilim. What happened to the Nephilim? Well, the book of Enoch, chapter 15 says, You have defiled yourself with the blood of women and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore, I have not appointed wives for you, for as the spiritual ones of heaven. Now, the giants who are produced from the spirits of, and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born of men. From the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies, 
Because these things were not human. They have nowhere else to go. God has an order and a plan and a design and a system for spirits of people. When we die, go to Sheol. We're resurrected later on. We're judged. These things, they're not really part of the plan. They're like a, a virus in the software. We have to get rid of them, right? They're, they're, they're corrupting our software, essentially, of this world. So there's this huge antivirus uh, program being, uh, that's, that's going on in the world. So while these things are deceiving us, um, and then they're going to get wiped out in the end. And we're going to re- reboot the system. going to get a new computer. <laughs> a new heaven and a new earth. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies. That's what uh, demons are. They came from the Nephilim. From the 200 watchers. So you see here, this group, Obama's transition team, including more than 200 entities, 200 demonic entities. Why? Because of the book of Enoch. 200 fallen angels came to earth. And these things are still alive, man. These things are eternal. The fallen angels. The Nephilim die, but their spirits live on as demons. But the fallen angels, these are angelic beings, and they rebelled against God. They're fallen angels. Name of Bob Dylan's last album, right? 200, look at the word choice, man. They tell us what's going on. We just have to look carefully. Not traditionally included in the formal transition planning process. 200 entities has been engaged fully in the transition process from the beginning and has met regularly over the past several months. They have been meeting with more than 200 demonic entities over the last several months. Where? In Antarctica. Antarctica is the edge of the world. That's where the door is between earth and heaven. Okay, it's not some kind of weird uh, dimensional thing where they just pop out of nowhere. There's an edge to the atmosphere between this world and the next world, the heavens above, whether it's water or some kind of plasma or these fallen angels. And angels, they're kind of basically energy and light and all this kind of stuff. They're not like us, flesh and blood. They can take on our form. They can inhabit us. I don't know the details here, but this is what's going on. Antarctica. 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 Everyone's going to Antarctica. All right. Google Earth. Now, this is the the outdated uh, globe model that we don't use anymore, but that's what we have. Let's check it out. So, Kerry, John Kerry, right this very moment, Pegasus Ice Runway, which is right here. And this, you'll see, this is about 77, 78 degrees uh, in the southern hemisphere. Okay, it's this little airstrip in the middle of nowhere, the edge of nowhere, I guess I should say. But Antarctica is very interesting. Uh, this is kind of below New Zealand. Now, this is a globe model, so this is not accurate map at all, actually. You can see all these fake lines. Look, this is just these white lines all over the place that have, make no sense whatsoever. This is just a total botched job. So he's at about 78 degrees uh, south. Let's say it does go out to 90 degrees to the edge. So that's about 12 degrees. And one degree is 60 nautical miles. 60 miles is one degree. So Kerry's plans called for his entourage to transfer immediately at the airstrip to a smaller military transport plane for a three-hour flight to the research station the U.S. government operates near the South Pole. So he's going to the edge, near the edge. So it's about a three-hour flight. Well, he's at 78 degrees south. One degree is 60 miles. 60 times 12, because he's got 12 degrees to go, that's 720 miles. Let's say the plane flies at, um, I don't know how fast this plane's going to fly. Let's say it's a, a commercial aircraft flies at 500 miles per hour. He's on a smaller plane. Let's say it's uh, 220 miles per hour. That's about, that's a little over three hours, okay? So if he's flying around 200 miles per hour, 250, whatever it is, he'll get there around three hours, three and a half hours. So he does have around a three-hour flight to where he's going. And it would make sense. And he says he's going to the South Pole. South Pole is actually here, right? On the edge, the edge of the Earth surrounding us. So let's say he's around here somewhere. So he's around here. He's got about 12 degrees. So he's got about 700 miles to go which would take him about three hours. And he's going to go to the edge. He's going to the edge of the world. They don't let people go here, right? Normal people cannot go to the edge of the world. Now, we really don't know what's on the other side of this, but it's, uh, you know, it's essentially heaven, the heavenly realm. We have our heaven here. Sometimes it's called heaven, the atmosphere, the air. 
but there's a, uh, a, a different realm. So he's going to the doorway to consult with the fallen angels directly. This is where he's going to talk to the people on the other side, the people on the outside of this world, because that's what it says. The whole circumference around the edge of the earth, the ice wall, the ice barrier, that is the South Pole, which is not a, really a pole, is it? It's just the circumference. They got it all backwards. So it says right here, remember, this group includes more than 200 entities, and they've been engaged in the transition process from the beginning, and they've been meeting regularly over the past several months. John Kerry is in Antarctica meeting with the entities. We see that this uh, Russian Orthodox uh, leader, Patriarch Kirill, has been meeting, and he met with the Pope around the same time to give him a debriefing. And Obama has been meeting with these entities as well. They've been meeting regularly over the past several months. They're telling us right here. We see the origin of these 200 entities right here in the Book of Enoch. They were in all 200 Fallen angels, 200 of them, came to earth. Okay. Now, a lot of them are locked up. So maybe they, you know, maybe what they're doing is these people are in jail, essentially, the, uh, the abyss. So maybe they're breaking these guys out of the abyss or they're coming out of the abyss. There, there's a term limit. They do get out, right? These people are getting out, man, these demons. And we're heading into the days of Noah again. And uh, when all flesh was corrupted... You know, in that flood, that was to save humanity because these people defiled the entire world. They corrupted our DNA with hybrids. They even came down and mated with animals. That's where all these gods and goddesses come from. These statues you see everywhere, like in India and all these places, those were real, man. Those were real. And they're, it's a freak show is what it is. And the flood wiped out all that uh, corruption going to happen again. They came back. They came back. Somehow the DNA strand survived the uh, flood. So you can see Enoch. Enoch was the seventh generation of human being on earth. History started about 6,000 years ago. He was the great grandfather of Noah. Enoch wrote this book, the book of Enoch, and he wrote it around 5,000 years ago. But this dude, man, he saw how everything works. He knows what's going on. Book of Enoch. I mean, unless one of these guys wrote a book before Enoch did, you know, did maybe Adam wrote a book, Seth? I don't know. I don't know. As far as I know, it's at least one of the oldest books in the world, if not the oldest. Pre-flood book, man. Somehow they must have put it on the boat. So a lot of weird stuff. Days of Jared, right? That's where the Nephilim came, the giants, all the first generation Nephilim. They killed each other off. And then the spirits have been roaming the earth since then. And then the uh, kind of a lower grade of Nephilim came through the flood uh, with uh, Ham's bloodline. And those are the ruling elite we have today are the uh, from the bloodline of the fallen angels directly. All right. And they'll even tell you that, you know, certain countries, uh, I get in trouble if I say which one. Well, I know Japan says it. Uh, and many other, most countries, in fact, believe their royalty comes from the angels, right? There, there are the bloodline of the gods. That's what the Greeks believed, and the, it's the same story. The Greek gods and goddesses are the fallen angels and their sons. The Greek mythology is really the Greek religion. It's really Greek history. It's really world history, and it's true. Gods and goddesses really existed, small g. Of course, the big god exists as well. History around the world talks about these gods and goddesses, fallen angels, mating with female women, producing offspring, and they also talk about a flood. And you find, uh, you know, fish bones on top of Mount Everest and stuff. So, <laughs> you know, despite all the lies we've been told, this is, this is history right here. This is the mystery history. All right. Now, finally, Mark chapter 5, verse 8. Come out of that man, you unclean spirit. So there's plenty of examples of uh, Jesus walking around cleansing people of the unclean spirits. These are the disembodied spirits from the Nephilim. Send us into the pigs. Let us enter the pigs. The unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs. Why would they enter pigs? Because the pig is unclean to you. So the unclean spirits in, went into an unclean body. A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's cloak. For whoever does these things is an abomination to your Lord, your to the Lord your God. An abomination, unclean body, like the pig, unclean. The spirits, unclean. 
they begged to be that they could go into the unclean body. They loved the unclean bodies. That's why these deceptive, secret, transgendered entities are demonically possessed transgendered entities because their body is unclean, because their body, according to God's laws, okay, this is God talking. Transgenderism, transvesticism is an abomination to God. Unclean. That's why the demonic entities, the unclean spirits, the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim inhabit the Illuminati trannies. That's how they get them to come, right? They want them to be inhabited. They want them to inhabit their body. Now, some of them are born. They are actually the bloodlines of the fallen angels, like the, uh, the royal families and the, uh, of England and Europe and all these people, the presidents of the United States. They're all related. That's why they control the bloodlines so strictly. And that's possibly also by being androgynous or transgender, they, they're not going to accidentally breed with uh, normal people either, right? They're going to control their breeding. So they, you know, they all, yeah, they have lots of babies and stuff, but we don't, they're not coming out of these people's bodies because those are men. The ones who look like women are men. The w ones who look like men are women. They're Nephilim, man. So the elite, the ruling class, especially in the political realm, they are bloodlines of the fallen angels directly, blood, bloodlines of the Nephilim. They have that blood. They do come from heaven, essentially, right? And they're rebelling against God. So all these stories, all these people around the world who say their royalty comes from their angels and stuff, they're actually correct. It is true. Obama doesn't have a birth certificate or a uh, social security number, you know? So it's, um, he's, you know, he's some kind of creation. He's a bloodline uh, breeding program uh, creation kind of guy. Probably not even human, just purely demonically possessed. That's why they can lie so well. And Hillary Clinton's the same. And Trump's the same. That's why he's, he's always doing the 666 sign when he's lying. It gives them power to deceive. So it says right here, they did all these abominations so that the land became unclean. So everything became unclean. The whole, even the land became unclean. Revelations 20. This is the end. Okay, this is the future right here. Threw him into the pit. Basically, uh, these fallen angels, the devil, Satan, whatever, the leader of the fallen angels, threw him into the pit, shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer. They're deceiving us, right? That's what they do. This word deceive is used all throughout the Bible. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So they're not going to be deceiving us. There, there will be no more deception because the deception started with the devil in the Garden of Eden. And their whole plan continues to this day with their Nephilim bloodlines ruling the world and their secret tranny, demonically possessed bodies all over the place deceiving us and just lying to us to try to get us to follow them in their rebellion against God, right? And even this world, this globe, earth, they try to tell us that the very world we live in was just a big accident and all this. They're trying to kill God in our own minds, right? They're just trying to turn us away from God and towards them, and they don't care about us. They, you know, they may help us briefly in this world. If you sell your soul to the devil, yeah, he may give you some talent or something. You may become a big shot in this world for a little while, and then you're going to be nothing in the next world. See, God's will is more about delayed gratification. The best days are yet to come for believers. Now, the, if, if, if you're living under these demonic entities and following their ways in this world, you get some immediate gratification. You do. I, I admit it. I used to live like that. Immediate gratification, but then you get long-term consequences and even eternal consequences. You die. God's will, yeah, you know, it is hard. It's hard. You got to suffer sometimes, but it's delayed gratification. A bit of suffering, but a lot of joy as well but it's a, a different process. The payoff is eternal life. You follow the devil, it's eternal death. We're still being deceived. You got stories like this coming out. NASA's DNA sequencing in space is a success, researchers confirm. Who are these researchers? They're lying, man. Look at this. Confirm. They're li it's a lie, man. Just straight out deception. Outer space doesn't exist. So basically, they're creating hybrids now, right? They're creating hybrids. That's what this means. You got a secret, demonically possessed tranny right here. They're producing hybrids. They're hanging out with them in Antarctica. 
The Nephilim are coming, man. They're coming to get us. The Nephilim are coming. The fallen angels are coming. Satan is going to establish his kingdom completely in this world. Now, God will protect us. The demons are coming. They're here already. And they do, they do control the world right now, but they're going to control it even more. It's all coming, man. The, uh, the prophecies are about to come true. Not sure exactly when, but it's happening more and more every day. Because, according to the whitehouse.gov fact sheet, they're meeting with more than 200 entities over the past several months in Antarctica. 